hate you won't get on with things. This is enough. We are trying to save the dog. Yeah. Meaning that uh wants me to death now for the second time. Yeah, the other one comes the entirety of groups like Cockroach and, uh, yeah. But we thank everybody for coming. It was very yeah. kind and we've been treated kindly. You know, every, every turn we made, the kindness is just overwhelming. It's overflowing. Thank you. Anyone else? I think this is completely wrong because seeing me, he's, he's a family dog. He deserves to be home with his family. He's. I've seen Sammy myself, and he's, he's not one vicious dog in his body. I feel Sam, the family's been through enough, and to keep this going on and not returning their dog to them, they've lost enough. And for them to have to lose their dog, it's, it's unnecessary. Let the family have their dog back. Anything else we want to go home? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You want to stay in your drive? Well, I'm not going over yet. Thank you. We'll be here when we go after a To be fair, the board must evaluate your input along with other information on this subject. Remember that you are addressing the board. A public hearing is not the time to debate or argue with other citizens or staff. Avoid repeating points that have already been made by other people. You are welcome to say you agree with the previous statement, but repeating it only prolongs the hearing. A person upon any public or private property other than its owners or keepers. Any animal which is physically injured or killed, another domestic animal, livestock or pet while off its owner's or keeper's property. Any animal which bites, inflicts injury, assaults, or otherwise provocation on any public or private property. Any dog which has been used primarily or in part for the purpose of dog fighting and or dog trained for dog fighting. The Animal Hearing Board shall not declare an animal to be vicious if any of the following criteria is met. If any injury or damage is sustained by a person or animal who at the time such injury or damage was sustained was committing a willful trespass or tort upon the premises occupied by the owner or keeper of the animal, was assaulting the animal or committing or attempting to commit a crime. If any injury or damage is sustained by domestic animals which at the time such injury or damage was sustained was teasing, tormenting, assaulting, or invading the premises occupied by the owner or keeper of the animal. If the animal was legally protecting or defending the premises occupied by the owner or keeper of the animal. With that said, we will now start the hearing. So who do we have here as witnesses tonight to the actual incident? Anybody? <coughs> and you are Gabriel Steele. Okay.
Would you come up to the podium, please, sir? Um, really, all, all the names and I could say, and Trent Hinkleman. And, and who are you, sir? I'm Trent Hinkleman, and the ex attorney. Okay. And, and really, all he wants to say is he wants to talk about the opportunity to, to let Sammy go be with his, with Autumn's parents. If, if you would at least consider letting, Ed, letting Sammy live so he can go. Um, we have some people who can testify as to Sammy and his demeanor. Um, we also have some people who can testify that you know, Gina is up here from Columbus, Columbus Georgia, and she's going to take Sammy back home with her. Um, Autumn's oldest son, Kai, has had significant issues. He's, had to, he's been pulled out of school for a while. She can talk at length about that if you want. It. He's had he's seen counseling. He's, he's going through some significant issues dealing with his mom's death. And we think that being able to get Sammy home to him would help a lot. Um, and Gabe is willing to let that happen. That's really all he wants to say tonight. Um, it's very emotional, you know, and he doesn't care to speak about it. So, <coughs> so, would you consider information from Gina? Well, I don't see where that's really relevant to the actual case itself. I, I understand what you're saying, sir. I really do. But it really doesn't have any input into what we're here for. You understand? What are we here for? Um, well, we have these reports, and we haven't had an opportunity to speak. We haven't had an opportunity to see the videos. I'm, I'm giving you that opportunity to speak right now. Well, what I'm saying is we haven't had the opportunity to see the videos. We haven't had an opportunity to talk to these people. We, we just got these 15 minutes ago. I haven't even read through all of them yet. I've been reading as fast as I can. I can read pretty fast. Um, so we're asking that the board would consider allowing Sammy to live. You can go to Georgia. Um, you have, how many acres do you have? I have five acres of fenced land in the state of Georgia. And I would like to take Sammy home, remove him from the state of Iowa to the state of Georgia. Which is, which is a better choice. Well, we, we, under, we understand what you're asking, but we, we need to hear the case. We need to hear the evidence of the case. And that is how we are going to determine whether this dog is going to live or be euthanized. Whether, whether you're saying you can take it to Georgia or not, are you, are you willing to hear evidence on behalf of the driver for his demeanor or propensity towards violence or not? I mean, to, to a point? We, we have evidence here about other incidences. Um, Chip Perez filed some papers about some other incidences that, you know, there's a post, postal carrier that said that he had a card telling him that there was a dog at that home. And we, we, we have all been made aware of what's in that report. We've had that report for quite some time, so. Right, but what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is there's, there's evidence presented that doesn't pertain to the specific date in question here in this report. Why can't we present evidence that doesn't pertain to the specific date in question in defense of the dog, because he is a good, docile animal from what everybody that I've talked to that knows the dog has told me. I, I just, like I said, you know, we're willing to hear some of it, okay. but we're not going to let everybody in this room get up and speak on behalf of this dog. No, I, I agree with that 100%. I don't want to be here all night either. Um, I mean, if, if it's relevant to the 
demeanor of the dog. I get that, and and we'll we'll hear that, but we do not want to hear the same thing over and over and over again. We're not going to do that. Okay. Okay. Should we move ahead? <coughs> My name is Gina Colbert. I'm the mother of Autumn Steele that was shot and killed. I live on five acres of rural land in the state of Georgia, Columbus, Georgia. Y'all have a decision to make whether Sam is vicious, not vicious. There is an, uh, an alternative. Sammy can live and come to the state of Georgia. I want to remove Sammy from the state of Iowa. Two years before uh, Autumn and Gabe moved to Iowa, I known Sammy two years before he left that state. He grew up around two children. He was, I have never seen him be vicious other than barking. He's grown up around kids. I've personally been around him. They lived across the street from me. I know Sammy. Sammy is not a vicious dog. My seven-year-old grandson, all the son, is in crisis, grieving for his mother. He's showing aggression at school. This is a child that is a gifted child in what they call the glory uh, program for uh, very intelligent children. His grief now has turned to aggression with other children. It's very hard. He misses his mom. We have him at the Pastoral Institute two to three times a week in counseling. The school is helping him. Everybody's helping him. This is a child that is in grief. And it would, be, it would help very much if I were able to take Sammy back to Georgia for God. You know, I'm at your mercy. We're all at your mercy. And I don't know what else to say. But I will, you know, if y'all would agree, I will take him tomorrow morning and remove him from your state. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Joseph Maxwell. I volunteer at the Home Center here in Burlington. I have worked with Sammy. I have pet Sammy, fed Sammy. I don't see no any vicious bone in that dog at all. It's a family dog. It's sad he wants to be home with his family. Of course, you guys might think he's vicious because he was protecting his family and protecting his own. And I mean, my part of to tell you guys already made you guys' decision already, but I'm hoping something will change you guys' mind. There's, there's only one life that's going to take you, no, don't take two. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. It, it, the, it's enough. This is enough for our family. It really, please. This is enough. Okay, okay. This is enough. I also have video on my phone. Me, and Penny, and Tim Wagner's tail and being happy. We don't need to see that. I, I think that's enough. I mean, I have a third out here. It didn't print out exactly right. But it was 78 pages of comments. It's actually printed in 92, the way the printer did it. These are people from Burlington and, and West Burlington, primarily Burlington, um, where they, they had a, a site, Save Sammy, and they had over 18,000 signatures. Um, but, you know, given the internet, who knows? But we have 79 pages of comments, over 800 signatures from people here in Burlington. And, and there's one lady who said, oh, there's been enough death here. So. We're well aware of the petition that's been floating around. Is there any other input that anybody feels is relevant to this hearing? Go ahead. My name's Ed Rank. I witnessed uh, uh, what happened. 
To me, the dog wasn't being vicious at all. To come back to the lady when she was going after her husband, he was trying to get away from her, backing down the street. The dog kind of stops. The cop pulls up and sees the guy running. So he's back after Chase, you know, playing like he was with the lady that came up. Jumped on the officer's back, startled the officer, turned around, and that's when he ended up doing what he did. From my position, I don't believe the dog was vicious. From where I was at, I don't see the dog, I didn't see the dog bite the guy. I don't truly think he was being vicious in any manner other than he was just trying to play. He seen somebody running, so he was chasing. He did the same thing that he did to the lady as he did to the officer. Can we ask questions? Yes. And I want to thank you for some encouragement. I think your testimony is going to be very telling. Um, I have one question. Um, did you see um, the interaction of the officer with the people? And I'm only asking that because I want to know if you saw the officer touching the people, do you think that's what? Did you see Sammy going after the officer at that time, or? He, would, he headed after the officer before the officer got to the couple. Before. I was actually going over to get the dog. I seen him running towards the officer, which for me, I hate Great Danes, or not Great Danes, German Shepherds. To me, I, I think they're a violent dog, but that's to me. I had bad experiences with him when I was a child, but I don't think that dog was being vicious in any way. And for me to try to go over there in that situation, for me it says he wasn't being an aggressive in any form. Was the dog growling? Not that I heard. Barking? I didn't hear any barking. But you said the dog there. jumped on the officer? Jumped, jumped with his front paws on his back. And where did this take like, place? Like in the street? Or the off, the whip with the officer? Yes. Right, real close to the property line. I can't like say it was on the property. It was on the sidewalk okay. by the fence that's there. So the officer pulls up. And he pulls up, stops in the middle of the street, and just runs over to try to break up and that's the, dog the altercation. And he's seen him running, and he just took off after him, met him roughly about the sidewalk or right before the sidewalk. So the, the officer had never actually physically got to the couple, is that right? No. When the dog started to chase him. He was on, the, the officer was breaking them up when the dog, you know, basically jumped up and put his paws on his back. That was the first physical contact between the dog and the officer yes. when the officer put his hands on the couple? Yes. So you don't, start. you don't think that dog was acting vicious toward the officer when he did this though? No. What do you think? Was he wanting to play? Was I think it was more of a playful action because he did the same thing <coughs> to the lady. He, jumped, he tried to jump on her back when they were going towards the sidewalk and street area. Was his tail wagging? Did you tell that? Or? I, don't, I, don't, I can't really say it was. I can't say that it wasn't. Do you know if this dog is neutered? I don't have a clue. Yes. Yes, he is neutered. neutered. Yes, he's neutered. What did, I just want to make sure that I'm clear on this. How soon after the officer got out of the car before the dog started running? Immediately? He was probably the front of his car when the dog finally seen him. And he seen him, was, he was running toward, running, so he took off after him. He didn't get to the officer until he was already breaking up the two people. He didn't get to the officer until he was breaking up the two people? Yes. But you said he hadn't touched the two people yet. When he jumped onto the guy, he was tugged, pulling them apart. Prior to that, the dog never got to him. Did the 
but you never saw Sammy bite Jones? No. From where I was, I never seen any bite, so mm -hmm. I was probably, you know, 50 feet away, 70 feet away, something like that. I could not tell if the dog actually bit the officer or not. I don't, I can't say one way or the other, but I don't think the dog was being aggressive from my point of view, from where I was standing. Do you know of any other times that there were any issues with the dog? I do not. I know I'm like, they said something that there was a report on the postal carriers complaining that he's a vicious dog. They complained about my dog being that, and he's not vicious at all. He's just a big dog that they're scared of. So I, the postal guy, I don't think you can really take his word on it because if it's a big dog and he's even remotely in the yard, he avoids the yard. There's times like if I have my dog outside or chained up, I won't get my mail for two or three days just because he won't come into my yard. Thank you. Anybody else? Sat there, 
the dog was running around, the other officer started pulling up. I seen Sammy run between me and I'm bleeding all over the place. So I set my son down, I grabbed him and I ran him to my garage. Well, first I ran up to my front step. I was going to throw him in the house, but he was bleeding so severely. And I ran around back to the garage. When I got into the garage, I came back around the corner and my wife's laying on the ground. And we don't need to get in the rest of it today. This is boring. That's what I saw personally. I never saw that dog bite that man. When I called his name, he stopped. And when that man fell, is when Sammy jumped towards him. He didn't even make it to him before that man squeezed off two rounds. But like I said, he pulled his weapon as soon as he saw my dog. So if anything, my dog was doing it. So you didn't see the dog him bite him? Never saw him bite him. I've never seen him bite him. Either. And yeah, he went after the mailman. What dog do? He never bought that, bit that man. That man fell down on the ground on the ice. Then he stood over and barked at him. The man was spraying pepper spray in his face the whole time. Sammy just stood there and barked at him. Never tried to chew him up or nothing. He sat there when I walked outside. He sat down. I grabbed my dog. I took him inside. He said, Happy again. We're going to stop delivering your mail. So from that point on, anytime my mail comes at a certain time every, every day. From that point on, if he was outside before the mail carrier got down my street, I put him on the chain. In my backyard behind the fence. Like the dog jumped over the fence? With the mailman? With the mailman? Yes. It's only a I mean the fence is probably just out. He's not pulling the German Shepherd, he's solid. Mixed with German Shepherd. <coughs> been around Many people would come over, and you can ask most of the officers been in my house. Sammy's a good dog. Whenever someone shows up, he goes to the door and barks at But I always put him up. And that day, I wasn't able to do the situation. I had no one. My life wasn't in danger. My child's life wasn't in danger. My wife's life wasn't in danger. Tell that officer to hold his gun out of his hole. We also have two other incident reports here where officers were at your house and the dog was acting aggressive and had to be secured and then one time it was let out by your son and the dog charged at an officer. That is true. That dog never came down those steps. The officer was standing next to me in front of my front door. He, the dog was upstairs in the spare bedroom. My son opened the door before my dog even came down the stairs. I was able to get to him and put him back upstairs. I do have a question. Um, you mentioned that the dog did not jump until after he was shot. He was in the air when he was shot. Okay. He was, <laughs> I didn't see him like the man. The neighbor described, I didn't see all that. But when he said for Sammy to stop, I yelled at Sammy and Sammy stopped. All he was trying to do was get between our family and the male's gun. And he stopped momentarily. I mean, it might only have been a split second. But I watched the whole thing. I was looking directly at the officer and he fell. And before that officer's rear end hit the ground, he had already squeezed off two rounds. While Sammy was in the air, Sammy just jumped. I just have one more question. After the, the complaints from the mailman, you started tying Sammy up. If he was outside, he was on a chain in my backyard. Were there any other instances after that with him regarding the mailman mm -hmm. or complaints that you were aware of? Well, every place I've lived, I've never had a complaint by anybody. When we lived outside of town at my dad's place, Sammy would just run free in the whole neighborhood. Everybody petted him, all the kids played with him. He was out there off the well. 146. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else?
Yeah, I, I think we need to have Officer Wolf take a stand if you will. That right here. <laughs> Am I, am I missing something in this report, or was the officer actually bit? He was bit. And usually in the past, when we've had a bite like this, we've had photographs of the bite. Do you have any? I don't have any photographs of the <laughs> bite. <laughs> Bite. No, it just means that in the left eye and then treated GRMC. So we really don't know what the extent of the wound was? No, I don't. Do we know when he was bitten? He was bitten prior to the fire base, but <clears throat> so to to the best of your knowledge, was he trying to separate these people or anything? At the yes, time? I interviewed Officer Hill. He was in the process of trying to separate the two individuals. When he heard the dog growl the next thing, he uh, felt the pipe in his leg. And that's when he started to back away from the people and the dog. Do you know if he was physically touching the dog or yelling at them? Or? He was trying to, he was trying to get them separated. So he was so, touching them. Yeah, he was probably touching them. Anybody else have any questions for Officer Wolf? Thanks, Tim. Is there anybody else that would like to address us at this time? I'm also a volunteer at the pound, and I can agree with what the other volunteer said. I've had interactions with Sammy. He's always very sweet. He's always wagging his tail. I've never seen any aggression whatsoever from the dog. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Can I speak? Sure. About a couple years before Gabe and his wife had moved up here. My name is Mark Colbert. C O L B E R T. A couple years before Gabe and them moved up here. One time they was moving from a house over uh, Phoenix City, Alabama, over to Columbus. In an offense yard about five acres of spent in. I have a small uh, miniature horse we had got, a female, and she was pregnant. And when her coat was born, Sammy was on our property. Because I was keeping Sammy for a little while so he could move from Phoenix City over to Columbus. The female horse, the mother horse, was bringing her coat up by the doghouse where Sammy was at. And Sammy played with them horses. And they eat, they would eat with the horse. The horses would eat with him. And there was never no problem. I have another dog there at the house. 
never no problem. Kids, we have a business. We have people coming up all the time. Sammy's never barked at nobody coming up to our business. He was just he was just a good dog. He's not vicious. And if he if the officer was a bit, I think the rest of us would like to see proof. Thank you. <coughs> Is there anybody else? Officer Chipper is with the Wilmington Police Department. Um, I'm here. Uh, I had two interactions um, at 104 South Garfield um, and interactions with the dog at that time, and I'm, that's what I'm here to talk about. Um, the first interaction I had with, with the Steels um, and the dog was on December 31st, uh, 2014. Uh, about 1, 1 1 p.m., we were dispatched to a domestic problem at that residence. Uh, Officer Ruberg and I, uh, when we approached the door, I knocked on the front door, uh, and immediately I could hear the dog had come to the front door and was barking, uh, but, which is, a, I guess, unusual. Uh, but when Mr. Steele opened the door, the dog tried to come out the door. Um, he had to restrain him. He grabbed his collar. Um, and at that time, the dog was, I would, I would consider if he was thrashing around, trying to get outside. Don't know if he was trying to get at me, Officer Ruberg, but... He was definitely thrashing around, banging against the screen door and the door. Uh, Mr. Steele told me not to come in. He said he's going to go put the dog away. Um, he came back a short time later. And he said he put the dog in the garage. Um, and at that time, we, we took care of the incident. Um, and I didn't see the dog anymore, I guess, during that time. Um, the second incident um, was on January 5th of 2015. Um, Officer Lucas Kramer and I were dispatched up there, I think it was approximately 12.30 p.m. Uh, for another domestic. Uh, at that time, uh, I was the first officer there, um, made my way into the residence. I was talking to Mr. Steele. Uh, Lucas Kramer uh, had arrived a short time later, was talking to uh, Autumn Steele in the kitchen. Um, at some point in that conversation, uh, Mr. Steele stated that, and I don't know if I had asked him where the dog was, because I remember the dog from the last time I was there. Um, somehow the conversation got uh, we got talking about where the dog was at and he had stated that the dog was upstairs in the bedroom uh, during the investigation uh, I saw his younger son go up the stairs I uh, didn't think anything about it a short time later here comes the dog running down the stairs and it's kind of a split level home he made it down the first flight came down the second flight and it was on the actual first floor um, I was just standing inside the door of Mr. Steele there, so we were kind of in the, I guess the foyer area, if that's what you want to call it. Um, and the dog definitely came charging towards me. Uh, Mr. Steele happened to see it out of the corner of his eye, turned around and grabbed the dog, um, and he took it back upstairs himself and, and shut it up, shut, shut it in the room. Um, and I remember him telling his son to leave the dog in the room and go open the door again. So, I mean, those were the two interactions that I had with the dog in that residence. So the second incident when the dog came down the stairs, was he growling? He wasn't growling. Um, he just, he was definitely running towards me. Um, was it a happy run towards you, or was it, you felt, you felt threatened, or? I was backing up, let's put it that way. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't very comfortable, let's put it that way. Was it only because you didn't know the dog, or you felt that he might? Well, I mean, I, like I said, I had an interaction with the dog less than a week prior to that on December 31st and I kind of knew you know what he was like then just you know seeing him at the front door so when he come at me I, I was definitely uncomfortable and I, I didn't know what he was going to do. When Mr. Steele grabbed the dog did he stop right away? Or when no he stopped he kind of yanked him back and immediately took him upstairs put him back in the room. Can I say one more thing real quick? Thank you, officer. Can you. Can I say one more thing real quick? If y'all do allow us to take the dog back to close, he will go back in the same yard with the horses. Thank you. <coughs> Anybody else?
If there's nobody else that wants to speak, how this works is we're going to close this hearing. You will not have any more input. We will discuss this as a board and we will make our determination. So I'm going to ask one more time. Does anybody else want to speak? Okay, at this time I'm going to close this hearing to the public and I'm going to open it for the board to discuss. determined that this dog is not vicious. <laughs> On the evidence that was provided by to us tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 